Greetings, greetings, everybody. Greetings again. This is the Alternative Guy back again with another video. Okay, so we have been struggling around trying to figure out how we went from indigenous to Negro to Black. Well, I have in this video you're going to see one of the major focus in this whole uh, situation, how the paper genocide took place. The person that I'm going to talk about today, he was a major, a major influencer in especially Virginia. But what you have to realize is that we have a lot of people that families are originally from Virginia and then they moved north and went places, uh, other places. Uh, in my research, I don't see where Virginia was too connected to what the so-called uh, Trail of Tears. A lot of people um, in the area that I grew up in, uh, a lot of the families migrated to New Jersey, New York, and places like that. So once you watch this video, then you will be able to see that this, this guy, Walter Plinker, he was a eugenicist, and he had all kinds of influence over politicians in the Virginia area. So this video, we have a lady explaining Walter Plecker, and I want you to check it out. And I want you to give it a thumbs up because this information is important for us to understand how we went from indigenous to Negro, colored, black, African American, and we've been renamed by other people. So here's the culprit. Although outright warfare against Virginia's Indians had ended, a different threat emerged in the early years of the 20th century. The Racial Integrity Act, championed by state lawmakers and officials like Walter Plecker, challenged their very identity as a people. The Plecker era was truly one of the darkest times for Native people in Virginia. But I think it's critical for us to think about what was the genesis of the, the ideology that Plecker was um, a proponent of. And it's really uh, the eugenics movement. The eugenics movement was a pseudo-scientific movement. Uh, we say pseudo-scientific today because we find that the science that they were proposing is not what we today would honor as scientific in, in any way. Um, the eugenics movement has a direct link to the descendants of Charles Darwin. They somehow made the leap to these notions about racial purity. What is best for each race is racial purity. Plecker and his friends convinced the Virginia legislature to adopt very restrictive legislation in 1924, it's called the Racial Integrity Act. With this legislation, it was decreed that there were only two possible categories. One is white, which means a person, you check that you're white if you have white ancestry, Caucasian ancestry, and absolutely nothing else. The other category is everybody else, and that's colored. So th this was very hard on Virginia's indigenous community because in a sense it wipes away their identity, their identity on paper, their ability to describe themselves as Indian was not possible in the state of Virginia 
until 1968 when the U.S. Supreme Court forced Virginia to repeal the law. Of all the people buried here in historic Hollywood Cemetery, including presidents, generals, and statesmen, few have had the impact of Dr. Walter Plecker. His stormy legacy continues today. My parents always made sure that we knew the story about what Walter Plecker had done and how it had affected our people. Plecker was a menace to, to Virginia Indians over many years. Well, Dr. Plecker was convinced that there was a need to purify the white race. He thought that he was preserving the Commonwealth of Virginia that he was maintaining the United States of America, and most importantly to him, that he was protecting the white race. For 34 years, starting in 1912, Dr. Plecker was the director of the state's Bureau of Vital Statistics, carefully compiling birth and death records. Anyone who had one drop of other than white blood was listed as color. They were mongrels, in his view. Plecker was relentless with great energy, he compiled lists and wrote letters chastising whites who applied for marriage licenses with those Plecker thought were impure. There's no question that Plecker was incredibly aggressive about using the few prerogatives the law gave him to register people. Uh, he used those prerogatives really to threaten people, to coerce them. Dr. Plecker once boasted that he had a list of people by race that rival that list that was kept by Hitler of the Jews. Virginia Indians particularly felt his wrath. Quote, like rats when you're not watching, he wrote, they've been sneaking in their birth certificates through their own midwives. You know, we couldn't claim we were Indian. It was against the law to say we were Indian. What do we claim? You know, uh, we're not black and, and we're not white. That whole idea that you are not what you believe yourself to be. Whole groups of people who formerly were um, recognized among the tribes of Virginia simply disappeared from the records. They were no longer considered to be Native Americans or Indians as they were called. Their children were not recognized uh, as members of the tribes and they're living with that legacy right now. Plecker and his many supporters believe not only that races should never intermarry, they shouldn't even mingle. Strict segregation would last for generations. Blacks had to have their own schools and neighborhoods. So did Indians. Uh, this was the schoolhouse and for a long time, up until 1908, the church. We blame Plecker, but he gave it to a very hungry audience. They ate it up. Indeed, Plecker was seen as a heroic figure in an era when genetic engineering was becoming mainstream. The eugenics movement was white supremacy cloaked in science. Its supporters were many and influential, from leading academics at University of Virginia to wealthy industrialists. We have to remember that in the 1920s, most people lived on farms. So people knew about livestock. They knew about growing corn. They knew about culling the herd and getting rid of the ones that weren't any good and keeping the ones that were the most sound. And so these ideas of animal husbandry were useful to people making biological arguments about society. There was a lot of cross-pollination between Virginia's movement and Adolf Hitler's quest for a master race. The Richmond Times-Dispatch editorialized in 1924 that racial intermingling would ruin the white man. Quote, once a drop of inferior blood gets in his veins, he descends lower and lower in the mongrel scale. That was the year the General Assembly passed the Racial Integrity Act narrowly defining race and making it illegal for whites to marry anyone of any other race. Plecker wrote to the governors of the rest of the states, urging them to pass similar laws to save the white race. We have a law. There's a sterilization law that's passed in Virginia, upheld later in the United States Supreme Court, allowing some 60,000 plus people to be sterilized in institutions, 32 states all over the country. Well, we're trying to help them out of you too. Have your entire family sterilized. The Racial Integrity Act, which Plecker pushed, stood until 1967, when the appropriately named Loving case about an interracial couple <coughs> led to a U.S. Supreme Court reversal. But the damage to Virginia's Indian tribes continues. There are more than 560 federally recognized Indian tribes in the country, but none of Virginia's tribes, the ones that helped the settlers survive, have that crucial recognition because Walter Plecker did everything he could 
to destroy evidence of their existence. In less than a century, what Dr. Plecker feared the most has come to pass. I'm sure that Dr. Plecker would be shocked to walk through a city like Washington, D.C., or for that matter, downtown Richmond, and see that there were people of different races walking hand in hand. It wasn't the world that he looked forward to. He really looked forward to a very different, uh, much more restricted world. So thanks for watching. Um, do give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel and share this with your friends and relatives. And we also have um, a website that we sell products on called Uniquely For You. And we also have a Patreon page. And uh, that will, all of this will be in the description below. And we're constantly, we're going to be constantly putting out videos in reference to these topics because uh, I'm, I'm doing a lot of research on my family history and I'm finding all kinds of jewels and I will be sharing that information with you guys. And you're going to have to do research because I'm finding out more and more that a lot of this information is not going to be around much longer because you have people uh, talking about burning books and getting rid of all of this information that we need to wake up because now people are not waking up. And the reason why I'm we're not waking up is because we have been bombarded with other people, other other information that's been put in our minds by people that don't have our best interest. We have to start investigating, doing research, and not always going along with that mainstream narrative because that's where they're getting us. They did it years ago with education, religion, and politics. And we know that just looking back in, 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 in our history here in America, we know that none of those avenues have benefited us. So we need to understand what took place and we need to understand what we need to do to become truly free. So continue to watch these videos and we can go on this journey together because there's a lot of information out here, but you're gonna to have to take advantage of the libraries. You're gonna to have to take advantage of books because you're not gonna find this information just anywhere. You had to put the time in and do the work. So thanks again. Peace.